Hi, I'm Brian Lane, Senior Product Manager, Imaging Software at Schneider Electric. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the process of setting up a loiter and detection analytic. What you need to do first is to get to this screen is go to the camera GUI by typing in the IP address. Once you're there, click on Settings, Events, and in the pull down you'll see Analytic Configuration. Okay, then you'll be at this particular screen. And I'll assume at this point you've already set up a profile. If you haven't, you need to do that first. And there's a video on showing you how to do that. Make sure it's running and that you've calibrated your scene. So once you've done that, come over here to the side and select loitering detection. You'll have a choice of drawing a rectangle or a polygon to actually create the zone where you want to prevent loitering. So the loitering algorithm is similar to abandoned object and stop vehicle, but it's optimized for detecting a person. So what you're going to want to do is, in this particular case, is I'm going to create a rectangle of this particular area right here. I do not want anybody loitering in. So that's now a zone. Now you're going to want to name the zone something that's a friendly name. Um, for example, in this since it is a loitering detection, I'm just going to call it loitering. Now when the analytic alarm comes up, it'll say that it's a loitering um, analytic under the front door profile. So that's why it's good to use a friendly name. So under object type, you can select all, human, or vehicle. Now you will only see this with the Pelco thermal camera. And what this actually is, is it will it's, it's optimized to look for a human or for a vehicle. In this particular case, we're only concerned about detecting humans for loitering. Okay, and uh, the next thing you want to do is enable the alarm. And what this is, is this will generate an alarm that will be received by the head end. You set up your head end to do whatever you want when you receive the alarm. For example, start recording, close a relay, put a red box around the video window, or you can set up a source and handler to have the camera run some type of action. The next part is enable, uh, let's see, the alarm severity. You can choose minor, normal, major, or critical. What the alarm severity is, this basically tells the head end how critical the alarm is. So based upon what you've chosen here and set it up on your head end, the head end will generate some type of action. So a camera sabotage, for example, may be a critical action, whereas a loitering may be a normal action. In this particular case, we'll set it for normal. And then you have dwell time and delay before the alarm. Um, so basically what the uh, the dwell time is it defines in the time in seconds that the alarm triggered zone turns to a normal state the day the delay before the alarm is how long a person is in that zone before it actually triggers an alarm in this case for loitering let's say we don't want anybody to hang out for more than 30 seconds in that zone okay so I'll set it for 30 seconds now there are exclusion zones and that you can you can choose. What the exclusion zones are are zones that you don't care about the people loitering in. For more importantly, there are zones where there are things such as flowers, um, flags, leaves, things that that might blow in the wind that might trigger a false alarm, um, a noisy area, for example. If you want to create a large zone that has a tree in it, for example, you can put an exclude zone in the middle of that zone so that it will detect around the rest of the zone. In this case, we've got a tree that kind of extends into that zone, so I'm going to create an exclusion zone just outside here because I don't want the tree to trigger anything in that zone. Okay. The last thing you want to do is set your object size filter. Now this, this is to tell the behavior what is the minimum and maximum size of the object. It is best to use a live object for this. Um, the perspective matters. For example, if the object is this particular size, you'll need to put it in perspective with the scene. So uh, a human being is going to look much bigger, closer than far away. 
So our maximum object size is the size of a human. So we don't want to detect cars, so we're going to use our human subjects here to be the maximum size. So we'll make it just slightly larger than a human, but not as big as a car. And for the minimum object size, because of perspective, we'll make it a little bit smaller here. Okay, so now we've set up our minimum and maximum object size. You want to activate your behavior, don't forget, and then save. So after you've saved your analytic, you're going to go over here to the live stream. Come down here to the bottom and click on the primary stream. What you're going to want to do is change this to the event stream. Click on select and then have someone go and test the analytic to make sure it's working for you. Go ahead. So now if you go to the event stream you'll see uh, um, any analytic alerts that might pop up. So we named this loitering and it says here the loitering detection was detected front door is the name of the profile so it's the front door profile triggered in loitering so that's how you're able to tell that your analytics is working as it should